record and get started. Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, happy Monday to our 18th virtual orientation session, Inclusion on the Hill. As I mentioned before, my name is Matthew Zielinski, Director of New Student Transition Programs, and we have four great speakers who will uh, meet with you today and share some great useful information. And to start off then, I will go ahead and turn things over to Kimberly and let her introduce herself and get things started for today. So Kimberly. Hello, everyone. Um, if anyone has any trouble hearing um, me or any of our other speakers at any point, please let us know um, by typing that into the chat. Um, my name is Kimberly and I am the Associate Director of Disability Services here at Seton Hill University. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all um, to this um, incoming class um, this year. We're excited about having um, students on campus in a more robust way. We were in person last year, but um, you know, had to do a lot of things um, remotely and creatively to allow us to continue our education um, experience and just kind of get through the day to days. So um, we're, we're all very excited um, about that. Um, so to tell you a little bit about what I do, um, as the Associate Director of Disability Services, I work with students with disabilities and with temporary injuries um, that may need some support while they're healing. So if um, some examples of some of the supports that we do, um, academic for sure, being a university, some students uh, may have had a Section 504 plan or an um, IEP in, uh, in school. And if they did, they may be eligible for academic support um, here at Seton Hill. That documentation is reviewed and then um, we have conversation with, with the student about what supports they would be interested in putting in place um, of, those, of those supports that they're eligible for. Um, no student has to do it. We recommend it. It's kind of like, um, I don't have my glasses on because it usually reflects the light, but it's like my glasses. I would never go to class without my glasses. Um, and because that allows me to access the material on the board easier. Supports that a student is eligible for are that same idea. It allows that student to access the information easier and puts that more on an equitable access as, as other students may have in that class. So um, if a student has a vision impairment, then we would look at obviously um, things that would support them in that way. Um, if it might be a text-based disability, we would talk about e-text and such. So that's the kind of the academic nitty gritty. Um, but we also want the student to really have a full and robust um, experience here at Seton Hill outside of the classroom, in the residence hall, um, socially, athletically, um, whether they are an athlete and on a team or if they're interested in intramurals, we want them to engage in whatever would make their time here at Seton Hill fun and interesting. It's going to be your home for the next four years. So we want you to take advantage of every single thing that you're interested in exploring. And my office um, works with every area on campus to make that happen. Um, so uh, again, if whether or not you're a student who may have a disability, or you happen to have an injury somewhere along the way that might make it difficult for you to interact and learn in the classroom, then I'd encourage you to reach out and, and talk to us as soon as possible so we can get those supports that you're eligible for. So that's the nitty gritty. And I'm just gonna take one more minute and tell you the why. So there's the law stuff, right? There, I, I said Section 504, ADA, there's also an ADA reauthorization. That's what we have to do because there's so laws. But at Seton Hill, um, you know, we've been founded by the Sisters of Charity, who their founders, Elizabeth Ann Seton, um, Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton, strongly believed in charism, taking care of and supporting so that everyone can meet their full potential. And so those laws, that's the floor. How we do it, how we go about what we do, that's everything above. And I think. That's what you'll get to learn when here here at Seton Hill. That's a long intro, I know. 
All right, thank you, Kimberly, then. Uh, next, I was gonna turn it over to Keisha. I'm not, I know Keisha was taking care of some things at home with a dog, so I'm not quite sure if she is around. Oh, there's Keisha. Yep, you're on mute. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Keisha Jemerson. I am the Associate Dean of Students for Diversity, Inclusion, um, and International Student Services. Um, excuse my absence and not being able to see my face uh, on, on camera, but we are so excited that you are with us this evening. Um, we're so excited that August is like two weeks away. Um, I, <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit about my office and also, um, if you're looking at your screen, Kayla McCargo is the president of Black Student Union. So um, in my purview for my office, um, I advise three clubs on campus. One is Black Student Union. One is MISO, and I'll tell you what that stands for. That is the Multicultural International Student Organization. And I also advise PRIDE. Uh, that is for our LGBT plus students. So I advise those three clubs. Um, I am on fifth floor. Um, I'm not sure if Kimberly said that, but I'm on fifth at men. Um, my office is there. Um, every flag, uh, it's a very busy looking office, but basically it is a hangout spot for students um, when they wanna just take a break uh, with class and everything. So um, with the office, of course, those three clubs do their programming. So let me just tell you about some mainstays that we have um, for programming for those three clubs. So Black Student Union, BSU, and MISO, typically, I'm gonna tell you this is pre-COVID, but we plan to bring it back. Um, they, they usually do a annual fashion show. Um, it's a big event. All students can be involved in that. Um, all students, we take all students' um, ideas. Then MISO does a uh, lip sync uh, contest, and they usually do that with our SAC organization, that is with athletics. Um, and then also we have an annual food festival um, at Seton Hill that all students can be involved in. Um, and basically what happens, I'm just going to be very transparent with you. You think about some food that you missed since you came to college and you decide that you want to cook it. So you come to the office, give me the recipe, a couple of days before the food festival, uh, myself and some courageous students that um, want to help me go down to the strip district in Pittsburgh and we shop all day to get the supplies that we need to make authentic your authentic recipes. Um, everybody on campus loves it. Uh, we really didn't do a grand one um, last year because of COVID. So I'm sure whenever we put out a date, it'll be marked. Um, Black Student Union also does a soul food dinner that is typically um, in February and either I cook for that or we get we get it catered. So um, for this past year, you all, the food was gone in 10 minutes. If you, if you didn't, <laughs> if you got there 11 minutes of the start, you didn't get any food. Um, of course I felt bad, but so those are the things that students get excited about. But of course you all know that the world, you know what world we live in. So we do have educational uh, programs that we do. Um, and they range in a number of different things. I'm sure um, from high school, all of you are aware of the heritage months that we have. So uh, as soon as school starts, it's Hispanic Heritage Month. So you will see programming for that. Um, so we just go, we work down through the calendar. Um, I have a open door policy. So if a student comes to me and says, hey, Ms. Keisha, did you think of this? Could we do this? Um, what has happened in the year prior, we did a lot of Zoom um, just for safety and because of COVID. Um, this year it's going to be a mix because what we recognized is that students liked to go to the programs but attend in the privacy of their rooms. So um, we're just trying to figure out how to live stream things when they're both going on to um, help attendance so people can still be exposed to everything. Um, 
at Seton Hill um, students. We are a predominantly white institution. Um, and if you have been at orientations, my fake virtual orientations, I know my face is familiar. But one thing with that, the Sisters of Charity have always been dedicated to educating everyone. Um, you know, that is the mission of Seton Hill. So while we, while the numbers, you might look at the numbers and be like, hey, 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 the mission of Seton Hill is to embrace everyone and celebrate everyone's uniqueness. And you also have to remember you're in college, okay? I, I, don't, I don't know if I articulate it well um, sometimes, but college is a whole different ball of wax than high school, okay? So it's, it's up to you to make it, um, make it all you can because four years does go by quickly um, to expose yourself um, to things you thought you knew about and things that you're like, oh, maybe I don't know about it to go outside of your comfort zone. Um, the students know that know me know I'm a big advocate of travel. So um, yeah, so just, you know, make these four years or if you're here with, with us for two years, make it as grand um, and great as you would like because you get to be my age and we're like, wasn't college just a few years ago? And then you look at your birth, your birthday and you're like, oh no, it wasn't a few years ago. <laughs> um, but, but it was a very um, good time. But Kimberly, Kayla, Arena and I, we, um, we're open to questions. So if you came into this um, session thinking of something like, oh, I really need to ask them, um, please do. And if you feel more comfortable, you can put it in the chat. Well, and Keisha, I know you introduced uh, Kayla, but I wanted to take a second as well to, to let Kayla and Arena introduce themselves and give us a little bit of background of who you are. Uh, what, what, what is it that you know, you're engaged with at Seton Hill to even help some of our students know um, how they might be able to ask you some questions that might, might help us out. So Kayla, if you wouldn't mind going ahead. Thank you. My name is Kayla McCargo. I will be a senior this year. So Ms. Keisha says four years goes by fast. Let me tell you, it goes by very fast. I am a double major in psychology and dance. As you know, I'm the president of Black Student Union and I am a third year RA. So if you have any questions about housing or what it's like in certain communities, I'm usually in sweet style so I can answer more of those questions, but I can try my best. So yeah, that's cool. Hi, my name is Arena Witt. I am a third year, so I definitely understand that the, it goes by so fast. Um, I am part of the equestrian team. I'm also a SAC member for the athletic department. And um, my major is education. I don't know if I said that it's going by a little too fast now. Um, and I live in a one person suite, so I can also answer questions about that. And yeah. So I had a question come in for the students in more particular. If you can talk about your experiences with finding that community, that space on campus. Because again, that can sometimes be a concerning thing for students coming to campus is finding that community, finding that home. Arena, we'll let you go first since Kayla went first last time. Sure. Um, it really, a lot of the people that you tend to get closer to tend to be in your major. Um, I know a lot of my friends are in my major and on my team, um, but oh, E would always tell us, I remember when I was first coming to Seton Hill and she, one thing she always said, any uh, orientation I was at, get involved, get involved, get involved like with clubs or like just anything like that, getting involved, that's really where you meet a lot of people that you'll be friends with. Um, and it really does make that difference of just not sitting alone at lunch or just seeing, hey, to somebody in the hallway. It's really great. I definitely see people that I've just said hi to in the hallway that, you know, otherwise I wouldn't have said anything to. So. 
Awesome, thank you. And as a follow up for that, um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. You can always just send them direct to me, that's fine. Uh, we had a question about SAC because again, sometimes things like that, um, acronyms aren't familiar to people from the outside. So can you explain a little bit more about SAC that you mentioned and, and what's all involved with that? Yeah, absolutely. So SAC is the Student Athletic Advisory Committee or um, what is it? Um, yeah, the Advisory Committee. And um, so what we do there is that all the teams at Seton Hill come together about once a week or once every two weeks. That's the way we've been doing it. And we kind of do an update about, you know, maybe there's uh, a competition that one of our teams is going to be in, or we talk about Make-A-Wish. Uh, we, as the teams here, um, are very invested in helping Make-A-Wish. So we'll do fundraisers and send our proceeds to Make-A-Wish along with um, some being uh, helping us as our teams. Uh, I'm on the equestrian team, so I ride horses. And so we will have, um, we'll share some of that while we're in our meetings. And it's just a bunch of stuff like that. It's mostly just an awareness about what's going on in the athletics department um, over the course of the semester. Thank you. And Kayla. I do have to agree. It's about like getting involved because I am guilty of sitting alone by myself freshman year because I was scared to talk to people and I was scared to like get involved in things. But that's how you find the people that you click with. You do you find the things that you like and you just go to those clubs. And if you if for some strange reason you can't find the club you're looking for at Seton Hill, because let me tell you, we have a lot. You can even start your own and I guarantee people will gravitate towards that club because we have a lot of like minds at Seton Hill and that's something that I like a lot. For me, it was becoming an RA first and then BSU because Ms. Keisha's office is home. It's very comfortable. We have some very luxurious couches up there on the fifth floor admin. <laughs> and being an RA, I felt as though I was able to click with a lot more people because there are people from a lot of different majors. There are people from different ages, age ranges as well. So you might find people in your set major, but you also might not find people in your set major. You might click with somebody who's in bio or in dance and be friends with both of them. So don't close yourself off. Always be open to different people, different majors, different clubs even, and you might find more people than you thought. That's a Thank great you. I, oh, go ahead, Kimberly. Sorry. I just think that's a great, great point that you made, um, Kayla, which kind of piggybacked our arena. You kind of start out with people that are on your floor or that are your, in your same major because you see them in class. And that's fine. That's your starting point. And yeah, get to know them. And then once you kind of get your feet wet and you feel like you're kind of settled in, there's lots of opportunities, especially the first six, eight weeks at, uh, on campus. My gosh, there's all kinds of different things so that you can start making those cross connections, you know, with, with people in, in other majors and such. So I think those were great points. Question came in that might be more for Kimberly and Keisha about how a student knows to come to you for services. So what is the typical way that a student will know that they will use you as a resource and how, how they approach you or find you? Is it through email? Is it through your office? What's the typical way? Yes, yes, and yes. Um, they can stop by, they can call, they can email me personally, which is kbassycook at setonhill.edu. And if you could put that in the, in the chat, Matt, I'd appreciate that or they can email the department. And there's three of us that monitor that email. And the department email is disability services at seatonhill.edu. And, and our recommendation is always call and ask. You know, if, if, if it's not our area, we'll, we'll connect you with, with the appropriate area. Keisha and I, uh, I have 16 years, you have, so we've, we've got like what, 26, 27 years of experience. 23, no. 23. <laughs> 23 plus my 16. 
we've been here. So if we don't know the answer, we'll know who does. Um, if you've, re you know, specifically to disability services, if if you've received supports before, um, or you were eligible to, make contact and talk to us this summer. Um, absolutely, in, to find out. But I'll be really honest. There are a handful of students that have been self-accommodating all the way along. And it's not until their sophomore or junior and occasionally their senior year that the classes get harder and that self-accommodating doesn't work anymore. And so sometimes those students will come and talk to us and say, you know, I am studying, I'm doing everything I used to do, but the classes are just not, I'm just not doing as well as I, as I usually do. And sometimes we'll refer the student out for testing and actually find um, that they're eligible for some accommodations. So if you're struggling, if, if you are not figuring out why you're putting in this much energy, but you're only getting this much results, you can always come and talk to us. Um, and we'll either work with you if it's appropriate or we'll refer you to academic counseling, but we'll make sure that you can get connected with the appropriate people. Um, I agree with what every everything that Kimberly said, um, and you all don't know yet, but um, when you come for Welcome Weekend, when you come, if you move in or if your commuter still is Welcome Weekend, um, Student Affairs, you'll see a lot of us. Um, so I may be one of the first people you see as you drive up the hill, but it's not uh, Associate Dean Keisha, I am directing traffic. So, you know, I think the more that students see, you know, um, our faces and everything, they may, um, they get more comfortable. Um, and I think um, for my role, I think the upperclassmen are the ones that tell, um, you know, tell the, the, you know, underclassmen, hey, go see Miss Keisha, she's on this floor, or I'll take you up so you can see her. Um, I teach connections. Um, so a lot of uh, first year students, well, right now 16 are in my class. So they might, you know, you get comfortable with me that way as well. But like I said earlier, um, I have an open door policy and the way my voice is, you really can't tell on, compu on the computer. You usually hear me before you see me. So the students will, if, even if they didn't see me that day, they're like, oh, she's there. Cause I heard her voice. So um, I'm just being honest. <laughs> And a shout, a shout out to Kayla, since she is one of our RAs. Um, our RAs do a wonderful job in connecting students with the resources. Um, they're gonna go through two weeks worth of training, whether it's their first year or their returning RA student. And uh, my office and a bunch of other offices on campus are part of that training. So they are all up to speed with who, who the resources are, um, if there's any changes in how we're supporting students and always working on ways on how to get students connected. We never ever want a student to fall through the cracks. We work really hard to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, usually a student has to work pretty hard for, for, for that to happen. Um, that's the benefit of being a small school. And um, we really do want students to do well and have the support um, that they need and that would make that transition to college easier. I'll also offer too that um, when you get to campus, your orientation leaders will really be there with you through a lot of the beginning experiences that you have. So we have 33 orientation leaders that will be there with you through all of Welcome Weekend. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they will also be there with the resident assistants if you are a resident student throughout the move-in check-in process on Thursday or Friday. But if you're a commuter student, they'll be there throughout the entirety of Welcome Weekend. And then even from there, um, all, all of our orientation leaders will also become class mentors in the Connections class. So you'll have a first-year student with you. Well, you, sorry, you'll have an upper-class student there with you in class on a weekly basis if you have Connections to also help you through those adjustments as well. And sometimes, again, like like has been mentioned, you're not always sure who to go to when you need help, and you're not even sure what it is you need help for. So that's where, as well, we make sure that you have enough students around you to be able to ask those questions that between an RA or an orientation leader or club and organization presidents, 
that they really are equipped to be able to help get you in the right direction. So sometimes that can be the thing about Seton Hill is there are so many people willing to help about so many different topics that you're not sure who to go to. But chances are, if you go to any of us, if we can't be able to help you through that situation, we know the right person who is equipped there. And sometimes it's oh, so oh, oh, go ahead. We keep doing that. Um, and sometimes it's a combination of things. Um, sometimes we'll work together. Um, I, I often work hand in hand with Matt and Keisha um, and our academic counselors. Um, and so it's, it's really kind of a multidisciplinary approach um, and tailored to whatever the needs of a student is at that time. I had a great question come in that I hadn't thought about before because Keisha and I mentioned it, connections class. So again, can you talk a little bit more about connections and its relevance to inclusion? Um, and so if you are a traditional first year student um, at Seton Hill, we require the connections class. So if you are transferring into connections, you won't necessarily have to take connections, but it is one of those bookend courses between connections at the beginning of your time at Seton Hill and then senior seminar at the end that all students at Seton Hill take. Connections is a one credit course that meets once a week throughout the fall semester. It is taught by university staff members from chief of campus police, vice president for student affairs, Keisha, myself, a whole bunch of different staff members. And then every one of those classes also has an upper class orientation leader as a class mentor in that class. So that's one of the great things about Connections is it gives you a staff member and it gives you an upper class student leader to connect with. The topics and connections are really focused around helping you adjust to life as an adult, helping you adjust to life as a college student in general, and then helping you adjust to life at Seton Hill. So we spend 12 lessons, 12 weeks, one lesson a week, going over different topics related to adulting and college life and Seton Hill life. So we really wanna make you feel as prepared as possible when you're all done through connections class to help you from there. So great question about connections. Any other questions? I have exhausted the, the uh, question list at this time, but I was wondering if um, Arena or Kayla have any additional thoughts from a student perspective um, about, again, uh, that inclusion piece and, and, and finding that or any uh, individual stories that you have about seeking help or getting help through certain things while you've been at CEO. Yeah, um, I've worked with disability services off and on um, uh, from my freshman, sophomore, and into my junior year now. And it has definitely helped me, especially with some of the classes that kind of made me take a step back of like, whoa, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, like I've worked with Kimberly and she's helped me in a lot of different ways, especially if it's like, how should I interpret what this professor is saying? I'm not entirely sure. Or if you are someone with accommodations, then they can help you kind of look at it and say, all right, this is, this is what you're given. And then this is what we in disability services can also help bring to the table and make this a lot easier. Um, and it really does help, uh, especially if it is kind of a possibly a more severe exceptionality um, because they they're honestly everybody up there is awesome they're all really nice and they all really just want to help you along with your professors and everybody is really accommodating because if there's something specific you need there's always going to be somebody there that is going to be like yes i'm happy to help or if they can't then like we said earlier there's definitely someone else who can so it's all a pie everybody adds a little piece to the pie at the end to make it whole and everything works out I definitely agree with that. Everyone helps one another. And that's something that I really liked when I came here to Seton Hill. Cause my first time, the first time I came, everyone was so accommodating. Everyone was so friendly. I was like, what is this? I was like, everyone smile at me. And when they walk by, they say hi. I'm like, you don't even know my name. And you say hi to me, like, thank you. So I really love the friendly atmosphere that we have here. In terms of like my story, uh, when I was a freshman, I didn't, like I said, I didn't really do anything. I was always the one, first one to go back to my room. So I'm like, I don't really know anybody. I don't know these people like that. So I was a little too shy to just go out there and do it. 
But my RAs were actually the ones that inspired me to go out there and join clubs. And it's funny because they inspired me to become an RA now. So everything that I have excelled in, it's because they inspired me to go out there and go do it. And they gave me options and different possibilities that I could get into. So I knew that there were other things that I could do. It's not just, oh, it's not just sports. It's not just the front page things that you see. There's other clubs and other things and other activities that you can even go to that you won't even know about unless your RAs tell you they post it up. You get emails. There's flyers literally everywhere about something going on that week. So there's always something to do. There's always a chance for you to meet people. There's always a way to be included in something. So a question for you too. I have a question for you too. What do you wish we had told you the summer before you came to campus? What, what would you have liked to have heard from us or known? Or perhaps, what did we tell you and we didn't, you didn't believe us? Um, I feel like something that I quickly learned is that adulting in college, it's really hard. Um, it takes a lot of work, uh, but we at Seton Hill here, we're like one big family. And so it makes adulting a little easier. Uh, it might, at first not seem like it's that hard but once you start and then you just have to do all this stuff by yourself like mom and dad aren't there to do your laundry or to remind you to eat or study um it then becomes a lot of work of like reminding yourself to keep yourself on a schedule but once you get the hang of it it makes life so much better and so much easier so. i can agree with that like I was told that it would be hard, but I didn't realize it would be that hard. Like, I didn't realize I had to remember to eat something. Like, you, would, you wouldn't think that you would have to remember to eat. Like, you know, you just you have your three set meals a day and then studying comes in, sports come in, activities come in. And you're like, oh wait, I didn't eat breakfast or lunch or dinner. And it's like, oh, I should probably do that. So time management becomes a huge thing. You, you have to get your time management down, whether you use your Apple calendar, Google calendar. I know Google calendar is huge here. I know we use it for everything. All the staff members use it. So Google calendar helps with scheduling. If you want to make a meeting with your teachers, uh, any type of staff member, just to help you kind of get into the routine and into the groove of what you want to do and how you want to do it when you want to do it. I know that helps me a lot in scheduling when to eat, and it helps a lot when you have so many activities and so many things planned because you want to get to all these things. But you also have to remember, oh, I have this test coming up or, oh, I have to study for this. So time management is a huge thing I didn't know I needed before I came to college. I did have a few questions come in, so I'll go through them. I want to make sure to answer them here uh, so they can be in the recording as opposed to over the text. So, is Connections class both fall and spring semester only one semester? So Connections is a class meant for your first semester on campus. So for anyone who's starting here in the fall semester, you would wanna take Connections in the fall. There are 16 or so sections to make sure we can accommodate everyone in the fall semester. From there, we do have one section in the spring, but that is typically, uh, I, I teach that course and it's even really focused for those students who are starting in January as opposed to students who are starting in the fall. So, so that's where if, you, if you're starting this semester, you'll wanna be taking um, connections. And if you haven't already registered or spoken with your academic advisor, they should have had you registered for connections class for this fall semester. So if you have any other questions about that, you can always let me know or, or your academic advisor can help you with that. Um, next question that came in, for ESA paperwork, do I just scan it and email it to the disability services email or do I bring it with me on move-in day? So ESA paperwork. No, not move-in day. That's something that you need to do um, now. So that would be um, emailing disability services uh, and there is um, paperwork that is Seton Hill specific that would need to be filled out. There's roommate agreements that need to be taken care of. And then um, it, the a student needs to be um, 
deemed as eligible to have an ESA. So um, that is a process. And if that hasn't been started yet, you're going to want to reach out to Disability Services ASAP. Um, and Terry, um, our director, she's the one that um, will review that documentation and really walk a student through what that process is. There's there's quite a, a few forms that have to happen um, for that for that to be possible. And so definitely not move in day. Um, it, it, it's uh, there's a there's a lot of things such as veterinary records, um, documentation for eligibility. I mentioned roommate agreements, um, vet records. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes along with that process. Uh, for for um, a student um, to be able to to move to campus with an ESA. Great question. And one more question coming your way then, Kimberly. Can okay. I still apply for accommodations even if I don't have an IEP or a 504? Um, yes. So being diagnosed ADHD, but the high school wouldn't give them a 504 and it, so just trying to follow through with that process. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so what's, this is one of those great example is this is a brand new chapter uh, in, in so many ways. Um, so to determine eligibility, we needed um, documentation of diagnosis and how um, in this example, how ADHD affects you. What is it like for you? Because if you have 10 people, you're gonna have diff 10 different expressions of that. For that person so you you'll send that documentation to a, that same email disability services at seton hill um, you can also fax it to us and i happen to have my fax number up i can't believe it um it's which is 724-830-1867 so it could be emailed or it could be um faxed um it matters not uh, but that would come to our department and it doesn't go anywhere else on campus and um, if, if you're eligible, and eligibility is different than in high school, um, and if, if you're eligible, then absolutely you might be eligible for supports. We'll have conversation with you. The laws that we work under are different. The ADA is what makes a lot of those changes. Um, so K through 12 is IDEA, which is Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, and Section, 54, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. The ADA, ADA reauthorization, and the and 504 is how we how we um, guide our work, and so it's slightly different policies. So yeah, it's very common for someone to have not been eligible in high school. For um, our students that are veterans, they may not be um, eligible for veteran disabilities um, support, but they again are. So those thresholds are very different. So never hesitate to explore what your options are and what you're eligible for. Ask. I always say just ask and then we'll tell you whether or not you are eligible. And even if you're not eligible, you might be, um, something else might be appropriate for you. So we'll explore all your options. It's not just a yes or no and then go away. It's yes and here are some things or no to this, but how, what do you think about these things? And so that could be academic support or it could be coaching. I do a lot of work coaching one-on-one -on -one with students and, and that's outside of the classroom. And it really allows, again, the students to kind of bridge the gap and really kind of develop some of those skills that they're gonna need um, to attack a certain course or to attack and uh, their courses in general and really just help with transition. I hope that answered your question. Thank you, thank you. I have re-exhausted the question list. And so if there's anything else to share or any other questions can come through the chat in the meantime. Um, so again, I'll, I'll offer back to our panel if there's any additional things to share that you feel with anyone else. I'll, I'll just stay on the accommodations for a second. You can reach out to disability services at any point of the semester. It could be midterms, you know, I wanted to try and do it myself. And then mm, mid not, midterms not so great. And then you're like, okay, maybe I should reach out and talk to someone. That's okay. We'll talk to you at any point of the process, freshman through senior year. Yes, we'll, you know, so don't hesitate. However, they're not retroactive. 
So if you fail that first exam, you own whatever grade that was. But we can work for, with you from that point forward. Um, and, you know, this is a kind of a, this session is an intercultural um, inclusion. Whatever your difference is, whatever makes you unique in you, we celebrate that. We, we support that. We, we want to know who the authentic you is. We all have multiple facets. We're all unique images of God expressed in different ways. And we really want to get to learn who you are and watch you grow and develop into the person that you're meant to be. So we're excited about having you. I do kind of want to add quickly to um, something that Kimberly said earlier about asking questions. Um, there are no stupid questions. It's really scary to ask questions sometimes, but it's so, so important just to ask, even if you're like, I don't think that I'll really get a very straight answer. But even if you have doubts about your question, just ask. Ask somebody because then someone might have an answer that you weren't expecting or someone might, you know, kind of dive deeper in with you and turn it in a way that you will be able to understand kind of like how Kimberly was talking about all of our facets. Um, like if I've ever talked to her about something, she and I both like horses. And so anything that we can make about horses, I it helps me just, and I get it. Um, and that's just something that we have kind of established of something that just really, really works. For someone else, it might be dance or some other sport or just a hobby in general. It really does help just asking questions, getting the the conversation just started and it will then blossom from there and it will make everything so much easier, especially in this awkward transition from high school to college because it is rough. We've all been there. It's rough. It's so rough. But asking those questions just makes it that much easier. Keisha or Kayla, anything to add to wrap up? I'll see you in August. <laughs> true. That is true. <laughs> Keisha's normally the one right at the stop sign greeting you as you're coming up the hill. That is true. Sorry, Kayla, you go ahead. No, it's completely fine. <laughs> No, I just remember last year it was Keisha was dancing up with the stop stuff. So anyway, what everyone said is very true. Everybody is genuinely celebrated. Nobody gets through the cracks, at least not on our watch and not on any RA's watch. No one's getting through the cracks. You will be celebrated. You will be noticed. And you're not just another number. That's one thing I really like about this school. People actually care about you. You're not just another number in a big lecture hall. No, you're a student in a classroom here to learn. So see you guys soon. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, students for the great questions that have helped to get this information out. Thank you to our four presenters for their time today and all the information they were able to give. Uh, a few reminders before I wrap up here, mentioning some upcoming virtual orientation sessions that are happening. Uh, you can always check out the Road to the Hill website for all of this information as well. This Wednesday at six o'clock, we have our Wellness Wednesday session. Uh, we will have staff members from Counseling and Health Services to again, answer your questions and present materials to help you. It's another great session for family members who might want to attend to ask those questions. They're always concerned about students' health and well-being on campus. So that's a great session for your uh, physical and emotional well-being while you're on campus. Then this Thursday, if you are a transfer student, we have our transfer student panel. We will have uh, upper class students who transferred to Seton Hill, uh, share with you their experiences of what it was like to transfer to Seton Hill and answer any of your questions. And then as a reminder, our third and final uh, required virtual orientation session of the summer, welcome to the Hill. Uh, we had one in May and one in June. If you attended those, you do not have to attend this one this Saturday, otherwise, make sure to RSVP and attend the Welcome to the Hill session uh, this Saturday at 10 a.m. with um, all of the various staff members that we'll have there. And so with that, I will thank everyone for the day and I will turn off the recording.